Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over making a vacation mode button for Home Assistant. You know, disabling the normal automations you would use and enabling others while also incorporating like an away mode or if you have an alarm system, whatever have you. Hope you enjoy it, thanks. I'm sure when everybody goes out of town, they would allow or want things to be different. You know, you would normally use motion sensors just to turn lights on or off, but you know, if someone's in your house, you'd want to be notified, etc., etc. Well, how I've done that here is I have this vacation mode button. Whenever I select this and turn it on, you see all these things activate. This is the one that's always on. Now when I turn this off, See, if you give it a second, these will turn off. A lot more things happen with this button, and that's what we're going to dive into today. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, we're going to want to go ahead and make this, this button right here. This is an input boolean. We're going to go to the helpers. We're going to go to helpers. Then we're going to look for our vacation mode input boolean. And I see right here it just says input boolean vacation mode, and there's a toggle. But what you would do here is you pretty much go here and you'd either do button or toggle. I prefer toggle. You'll make the toggle and you'll name it whatever you want to name it and there it will be. The next thing that I like to do is I like to go to the studio code server or whatever you use to edit your YAML files. I'm going to go to lights, classification mode lights. And you can see right here it's pretty simple and you'll know why here shortly. But you see that I have vacation mode interior and vacation mode exterior. You can use whatever lights you want. And this will make more sense here in a minute. So now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and restart Home Assistant like you would do. Then we'll go to our automations. We'll go to this vacation mode immediate. This one's always enabled, always. And what you're going to do now is you're going to make a, a new trigger. We're going to do it by state. So in our case here, we'll go state. And you see there's that little icon. It's right here. Notice it's the same here and here. So this state's the one I used. And then after you have a new one made, you're going to find your entity, which in my case was this input boolean. And I want to go from off to on is what I want to activate this one. We're going to go here. We're going to edit the ID name it wherever we want to name it, then we'll hit save. Now we're going to do the same thing for boolean disabled. We're going to go to that vacation mode, find it except for we're going to flip these from on to off. You see that there's a short delay and that's why it took it a second for it to uh, deactivate earlier when I showed you. All right, and now that we have the IDs made, we can use a choose. Now this is a really cool part of Home Assistant that they did in maybe a year or so. Go to this one right here. Let's choose Add Condition, Triggered By, and then that's when you're going to find your input, your Boolean Enabled Disabled that we made up here. But in my case, you know, like I said, we had... So whenever our trigger is Boolean Disabled, which is this one, which means Vacation Mode goes from on to off because you're returning it back to normal. First thing we want to do is re-enable all the automations that we disabled in the next section. And you see right here I'm turning back on all my normal ones. And then what we're going to do next is disable our other automations. And we'll go over these automations here shortly, but these two pretty much replace all of these when we're out of town because you don't need all this stuff anymore. We don't need to be notified. People are coming and going, etc., etc. We don't need the lights to turn on or off, all that stuff, you know, some day-night things, etc. And then we want to set the thermostat back to normal, except for I don't know why it's set that high, but we could even take this a step further right here. And we can put variables in here, and I'll probably do it eventually, where depending on what time of year it is, depends on what the temperature is set to and what mode it's set to. And the reason why you'd want to do that is you don't want 
um, in the summertime to just set it to 79. Same thing in the wintertime, you don't want it to be set to 79, but if you want it to be set to 71, you want it to heat to 71 in the winter, but you don't want it to cool to 71 in the summer. So that's where you can take this a step further and have uh, more variables here. Um, you can also go ahead and enable your security system, etc., and do a lot more. But that will all be done with these um, automations here. Now this is when we turn vacation mode on. We want to disable all of these automations that, again, we normally would use. Then simultaneously turn on these two. We want to go ahead and set the thermostat to whatever. And in my case, I happen to be in a climate in North Carolina where this is what I'd want it set to. Well, I was gone, so it's going to be really warm. It actually happened to be moderate while we were gone, but usually it would be 80, 90 degrees, and I don't want to come back home and it's 85 degrees, but we have, you know, aquatic animals and stuff like that. So that's pretty much all the pieces of this part of it. So what we else we need to look at are these two here. Now, this is the day and night ones. This is where those lighting groups come in. <clears throat> Every two hours, after it's confirmed that vacation mode is on, which means technically we can leave this enabled all the time because this is going to stop it from running. And again, like always, I always edit the ID, which in this case is two hours. This is where the options come in. If it's daytime, which in my case is looks like I have that backwards here, but you would you would do it. Um, this should be nighttime. It looks like this one would be daytime. So we can go ahead and rename these. This doesn't actually affect the automation, but and pretty much what I have it set to is that except for I actually need to fix this altogether. I just made it even worse. It's daytime after pretty much 8 a.m. or before 9 p.m. or if it's after 9, 9 p.m. or before 8 a.m. These are all the things that we're going to do. We are going to start by the goal with this is, I guess, let me back up. The goal with this is, during the day, there's not really much I really want to do extra. Because we're gone. There's nothing needed to be on or off or whatever. But at nighttime, we want it to turn off those two groups that we have made. That vacation mode interior and vacation mode exterior. And then, I want to put a random one on. And this one's work gets pretty cool, and I'll put this in the GitHub I always link below. Up until now, what I usually use this type of automation for was to get Alexa to say different unique things. That way it didn't get so boring. You know, like, go empty the washer, go empty the washing machine, hey, the load's finished, stuff like that. This tag random is what does that. And if you'll notice, these are the lights that are in that group. So it pretty much, that group of lights, I'm putting it here twice. I'm putting it in the lighting group, and I'm putting it here. And then we want to delay 30 minutes and put a random outside one on which is, in my case, just these two. And then what we do is we want to wait another hour and we'll turn the lights off. And the way I did it like that is, is my outside lights use a lot of power. And if you notice, this is only happening every two hours. So I pretty much have an outside light on for only about 30 minutes. And you know, you can take that a step further and you kind of see where I was getting at with it. So let's back it up and we'll look at the notifications. Now these notifications would drive me absolutely nuts if I wasn't on vacation because, and again, the same thing here with these conditions, it's not going to activate regardless, it can technically stay on all the time, but this motion one would drive me nuts, so I'm telling it to look at motion sensors that are inside of the house, 
you know, that we pass all the time. But we do still want to be notified if things are locked or unlocked, or if the garage door opens. Um, you can put windows on here. And more. But when I'm going to do the same thing with that choose. And my chooses are going to be triggers, which I've all named up here. I don't know why they're enabled, but we want to notify. And the trick to this is, is doing it by its attributes friendly name. And that's how I'm able to make several things in one spot. Instead of having to do five or six different chooses, I can only do one. I have both the entities here, and you see how that works. Front door deadbolt and garage door exterior deadbolt. That's what this will show, is it will say the front door deadbolt has been unlocked. The exterior garage deadbolt has been unlocked. And that's the same concept here. The trigger is the motion detected, and you saw those. They go from, I mean, off to on. We'll do the same thing. Motion detected from kitchen instead of kitchen motion sensor, you know? Stuff like that. I got the same concept here. Except for this one's a lot simpler. I don't need a template, I only got one garage door. And you can make these persistent, you can tell it to um, make it activate alarms, you can tell it to make a siren go off, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, the one that I usually use is much more complicated, I just wanted to have somewhat of a simpler one for this demonstration. Um, you can do things like, I have WLEDs behind all of my TVs, so I can make all my TVs flash blue and red to scare a potential intruder. There's uh, many different things that you could do with this if you really wanted to. This, my goal with this was just to kind of help you get started. Um, another thing you can do is if you have a camera out there like I do, you, we can set a, um, a script to take that picture and either email it to you or if you have an Android, make it pop up on your phone. That way you can see exactly what is detecting the motion because we can trigger it to take a snapshot and then we can tell it to send a snapshot. Um, we can make it uh, send specific um, sounds to your phone like you know door has been opened by morgan freeman or whatever all the built-in sounds are i don't really remember but there's a ton of different things you can do with this i hope me showing this has helped kind of um get your head rolling on it i hope everybody has a good day and thank you for watching